our cables directional that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video Hey folks, I'm Gene Dallasalo with Audioholics, and I want to address this topic about cable directionality just because I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube. One of the most recent ones was Paul McGowan of PS Audio, and he was talking about his speaker cables being directional. And I kind of had to chuckle a little bit because I would think by now people would understand the very basics of electronics, especially if you're in the industry. And you would kind of know that uh, some of the stuff is just nonsense. But I think it's important to do a video to address this topic because, you know, there's some facets of it I'd like to uh, talk about that maybe hasn't been covered in other people's editorials or on YouTube. Cable directionality. The first thing I want to address is when it relates to speaker cable. Just ordinary, you know, speaker cable like this. This is 12 gauge zip cord, twin feeder, just two copper conductors separated by an insulator. Very common. And then you've got the exotics like the Audio Quest, where they have the battery pack slapped on it, the 72 volt battery pack, which I found in my review that this battery pack does absolutely nothing. In fact, the one thing it does do is it acts as an RF antenna with or without the batteries attached. And it just adds noise to your system. Doesn't improve the measurements at all. In fact, this cable measured more poorly than good 10 gauge zip cord costing far less. So if you want a very expensive cable with a battery slapped on it that adds noise to your system and it costs five or $6,000 for an eight foot pair, then I guess this is the cable uh, that you can go to, but I don't want to digress. So when we're talking about cable directionality, let's just focus on speaker cables in this instance. In order for this claim to be true, because I've seen it on AudioQuest's website, I've seen it on Nordos, on Wireworld, they claim when the copper is extruded that there's a directionality to it at the molecular level. And the only way that you could determine the direction of the proper directionality of the cable is by listening. And that just seems very ridiculous to me because that implies somehow that the AC waveform that makes up music, somehow it's 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 not random. It's somehow uh, predetermined on how that waveform behaves and you have to pass the signal a certain way. Otherwise, it's not going to sound right. And as you guys know, just a refresher here, this is what an AC waveform looks like. And you can see that it has an amplitude response that goes to the positive at the positive part of the waveform. And then it goes to the negative at the negative part of the waveform. And then the current you know, changes direction as well. This is basic high school physics right here. There's nothing under, misunderstood about how an AC waveform works. Your audio signal operates on very similar principles to this. And there's just randomness to your audio signal. There's no predetermined set course for it. And in order for that to be true, that would mean that the cable would have to exhibit some type of diode rectification, like a diode. A diode will only conduct in one direction and you have to overcome a certain amount of voltage for it to conduct. And you can see here, this is a half wave rectifier. What happens is it conducts in the positive waveform and then it kind of filters out the negative waveform. And this is not the case. This is not what copper does. Speaker cable or copper wire in general is a linear device. There are no nonlinearities in wire. To this day, nobody's ever proven that there's any nonlinearities in cable. And we went and we did measurements on cables in the past, just cheap cables, OEM cables that come with your hardware. And we put this on an audio precision, one of the best ones in the industry. And you can see there's no distortion here. In fact, the only thing you are seeing at 13 volts is the distortion from the waveform generator. And it's down to 100, minus 140 dB, which is way more resolution than you're going to get with even the best audio gear. I mean, this is state of the art right here. And if there was some type of diode rectification because the cable was oriented the wrong way, you would see a distortion in this plot and it's not there. It just does not exist. So when it comes to speaker cables, if someone's trying to tell you that the wire or the copper is directional, it's a bunch of BS. Run away from that nonsense. It's bogus. But when we're talking about 
cables, interconnects, HDMI cables, then the directionality thing has some merit depending on the situation. And that's why I think it's important to address this. So I wanted to show you, I want to start off with just some interconnects. I've got some twisted pair here from Kimber um, interconnects. Now, twisted pair can come unshielded or shielded. The advantage of twisted pair is you get some good magnetic uh, decoupling. So you'll see a lot of twisted pair used like in phono preamps. It's just good at rejecting magnetic, magnetic noise. Sometimes you'll see a shield on it. Some of Kimber's products have a shield. And in many cases, they only tie the shield on one side and they leave it floating on the other. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of that approach. I know the argument is it eliminates ground loops, but in reality, if you set up a system really well and you and you get all your uh, paths correctly with your grounds and everything, there should be no reason why you would only um, tie the shield on one end. And it brings us to the next kind of cable. This is a coax. This is a Belden 1694A. I really like coax cables for a lot of reasons. Uh, they're good from DC all the way to you know three gigahertz. And if you have a double braided foil shield like this, you get almost 100% coverage. So you won't get any kind of eddy currents through the shield, which can pick up a ground loop. I've never had a ground loop using all coax interconnects. And I wanted to show you this book that I have, a good friend of mine, uh, Mr. Henry Ott, one of the best guys in, in EMC countermeasures. I keep this book like it's a Bible. I, I use this book in my seven, eight years of designing electrical systems and doing RF ground mitigation issues and EMI issues. This book has always come back because it's so useful. You could check it out. This is the second edition. I'm sure there's like a third or fourth by now. And I'm pretty sure Henry Ott is retired by now. But this guy was really, he wrote so much on grounding and shielding techniques and instrumentation and that stuff you didn't really learn too well in college because it's very practical. And I'm taking this excerpt from his book just to show you the differences between twisted pair versus coax. And you can see twisted pair and or shielded twisted pair is good from DC to about one, maybe 10 megahertz, very special applications. But coax is good DC all the way to several gigahertz. And a lot of that has to do with the shield impedance. You know, the shield impedance is much lower. It's much more effective at high frequencies. So anyone telling you not to use coax on interconnects, that's another BS uh, claim because coax, in my opinion, is really the best interconnect you can use, whether you're using it to plug in your source devices or you're plugging in a subwoofer. I always use coax or I use XLR. XLR is the way to go if you can go XLR because you get you know more noise reduction, you get a balanced circuit, advantages there. I don't want to get too far into that for this video topic. The other option where you have potentially a directional cable is in HDMI. And we did a video recently, we had Jason Dustel over and we talked about the bullet train cable. This is an active cable. So it comes with a five volt adapter. And what this is for is it reduces the noise of the cable. So you typically, if you're running a long uh, fiber optic cable, active cable and you're doing 4K video signals or even above, there are times when your source and sync devices don't have enough current that, power, that powers that active cable. Well, in this case, you would put the active um, five volt on the source side. Sometimes you could put it on both sides, but generally speaking, you would put it on the source side. And that matters. If you don't line up the arrow correctly, if you, if you run that cable through your walls or through conduit, and you ran it backwards, it's, it's not gonna work. So in those cases, cables are directional, but it's not because of the copper, it's because this is an active system and it relies on certain properties in, in terms of reducing noise based on how it's supplying power to the cable. So I hope this clears some stuff up for you guys. Um, look, I'm not out to bash anyone, I'm just, I wanna keep things real. I mean, at the end of the day, when you're talking about these technical principles, we have engineering guidelines that govern these principles. So if you're gonna make up a reason why you think your cable is better, don't violate engineering. 
for the love of God, please don't do that. That's one of my biggest pet peeves. And the last thing I wanted to tell you guys about is we have an SVS contest going on right now, sponsored by Audio Advice and, and SVS. They're giving away an SB or PB2000 Pro subwoofer. This contest ends at the end of this month, June 30th. And the winner will be announced on our website. You will not be contacted by some idiot in the thread below that claims you won a prize. You're only going to be contacted by either an AudioHawks email address or by phone. And um, we will be announcing the winner at that point. And this is for USA only. And we will never ask you to pay for shipping or, or any kind of fee. No out-of-pocket expenses for you. So I hope you guys enter and I wish you guys luck to win. And don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics or you want to, you know, ask me some questions or you want to talk about cable directionality, whatever. We appreciate your support. Please hit the thumb up. Hit the subscribe button. We really could use your help with that. We want to grow this channel so we could do more educational videos like this. And that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed. And until next time, my friends. Keep listening.